Nariva, with its wide variety of flora and fauna, is the largest swampland and the most important freshwater reserve in the region. For the government of Trinidad, preserving its diversity is a major ecological challenge. Since 1993, the reserve is part of the Montreux Report, making it one of the international sites requiring priority treatment in order to preserve it. Nev is Sham's brother. Growing tomatoes is his principal source of income, and since this is not a full-time occupation, he too would like to be a game warden at the reserve. For this reason, Sham often takes his brother to work with him, so that gradually he can learn about life at Nariva. What we need to do is do like more patrolling in this, in this type of area. We could find in the area. With his youngest son on his knees, Sham briefly reminds Nev of the main aspects of his mission. He must observe nature attentively, study the plants and the fruit, as well as the behavior of animals. He must also constantly patrol the reserve to discourage potential poachers. And he must spend days and even entire nights in the forest in order to know and understand it better. Do some patrol. Like if anybody come into haunt, we could stop them yeah. from haunting. Sham and Nev are going to begin patrolling the forest not far from the Nariva Reserve. Sham shows his brother where to find howler monkeys. The shouts these animals use to communicate with each other can be heard more than three kilometers away. Howlers are part of Annex 2 of the Washington Convention on International Commerce of Endangered Species. They are subject to very strict surveillance regulations. Sham teaches Nev how to observe their behavior. Howlers live in trees in groups of three to sixteen and feed mainly on leaves and fruit. Guided by his brother, Nev counts the monkeys. He quickly realizes that they are in the presence of an entire family. Sham studies the breakdown of males and females, their position in the tree, as well as the way they eat. All of these clues will be transformed into very useful statistics for evaluating the present condition of nature at Nariva. What they'll be doing, they'll be feeding on this, so the whole troop will be around here. Right. Then while the sunlight hitting them, they'll start going to the top and taking the sunlight throughout the weather. Later, Sham and Nev go up in the hills to the areas often frequented by poachers. There, they go down into deep caves dug directly into the hill.
the reserve has 32 species of bats of the 970 which exist in the world. The bat, the only flying mammal, lives in colonies ranging from a few dozen to hundreds of thousands of individuals. These are fruit eating, also called spearheads because of their small triangular shaped noses. Other species found in Nariva are insect eating. Some are even vampires, which suck the blood of sleeping animals and sometimes humans, and have been known to be carriers of rabies and other serious diseases. Once again, Sham carefully studies the bat's behavior. He explains to his brother that their survival is vital to the ecosystem, since many trees depend on them for the dispersal of seeds and for pollinization. Very sensitive to temperature changes, these mammals hide in caves during the day and come out at night. Sham shows Nev some insect-eating bats. They too play a key role in the environment. They are a natural insecticide. Each individual can swallow up to 3,000 insects in one night. In flight, bats guide themselves and spot their prey through echolocation, using their ears, which emit ultrasonic waves as radar. Thanks to the echoes transmitted back to them, they create a mental image of their surroundings. In a way, they see with their ears. The next morning, Sham meets with his boss, David Boudou, who works for the Department of Waterways and Forests and who directs the Nariva Reserve. Land Management Agency for 2.2 hectares of state lands, which is held in reserve. A land has been held. David pays regular visits to this Trinidad Island community. Has been passed on to the ministry. And one of the things that I would like to see happen is the, that the area fenced as an immediate measure and we're going to put up a clear sign indicating field site, field yeah, field site for field station. These men and women division. have been nicknamed Anybody squatters since they settled in Nariva without authorization in the I early 1980s. They began to dry out the swampland by growing rice, thus causing partial destruction of the environment. The government wanted to throw them out, but decided against it in view of the possible social repercussions. The decision was finally taken to help them assimilate and to make them active participants in the nature conservation program. Today they are limited in number and have clearly defined plots of land. Using the field station in terms like holding meetings, discussing conservation issues. Maybe we'd like to set up an exhibition room. Through organized discussions and educational activities, the reserve director maintains a dialogue with all the communities. The goal is simple, to make them understand that the future of Nariva depends on everyone's contribution. Vultures in the reserve are another way of measuring the condition of nature. Here, they are fighting over the carcass of a recently poached caiman, a species of crocodile. The shape of the wound clearly indicates to Sham that it was a female whose eggs and tail were taken by poachers. Watch, buddy. 
Not far away, in the heart of the protected zone, Sham finds a rifle shell. After smelling and examining it, he explains to his brother that it was probably fired the previous night. Now, they just have to find the poachers. The two men enter a deep, difficult-to-reach cave, which contains an abundant stream. At the beginning of the last century, some explorers went further in to find its source and never returned. This area is home to guacharos, or devils. They are protected nocturnal birds which nest in large colonies in deep, rocky caves. In spite of the almost total darkness, they have developed a surprising affinity with the rock. As discreetly as possible, Sham observes their behavior. He explains to his brother that if they are disturbed too often, the birds will go elsewhere. Some will not survive. Not all the caves are adapted to their needs. That's why visits should be brief. Like bats, guacharos use echolocation. They, however, produce sounds audible to the human ear. They never perch to eat, but instead feed as they fly, using their powerful beaks to dive into the heart of rich, oily fruit. The guacharos' diet, therefore, gorges their livers with oil, which is why they are also called oil birds. They are often victims of poachers since their oil is used for cosmetic purposes. A little further on, in one of the reserve's many water holes, the squatters gather conches, which they will either sell or eat themselves. This activity is part of their assimilation program. They have the right to gather a limited number of Nariva's resources, such as conches, crabs, and other fish. Sham stops to say hello and talk to them for a while. He knows how important it is to keep in contact with them and to be open and frank during their conversations. He may be the game warden, but he is not their enemy. By asking questions, he shows them that he is interested in them and in their way of life. It's essential to live together intelligently with respect for each community. Just behind, Nev listens and learns by watching the way his brother communicates with the squatters. Sham asks them about the day's fishing before examining the conches like a true professional. The small boy. Tomorrow it becomes, it becomes a come up tomorrow. Tomorrow. The now start. I come in, you hear no shot. People shoot, they know it. Then and only then does he talk about the poached caiman. He shows them the rifle shell and asks if they've seen or heard anything suspicious. He doesn't expect any information. He just wants them to know that he found the carcass and that he's going after the guilty parties. I'm going up the road. I'll see you all tomorrow. All right. Right? All right. All right. All right. All right. So I go one side and I sit down and 
I watching, I watching for about an hour straight. Then after I see. Sham's main activity at present is patrolling inhabited areas looking for caimans. As he waits for night to fall, he tells Nev about one of his adventures. One day as he was patrolling, he saw a giant anaconda. The snake wrapped its tail around his foot, then its whole body covered his leg and torso. It held on so tightly that Sham could hardly breathe. After a long struggle, he finally managed to get it loose and little by little put it into a bag. Then he cut a piece of wood and put the bag at the end of it and took the anaconda into the heart of the reserve. He let it go there. Some time later, he saw it again near the spot where he'd set it free. When I reach out by the road, I meet a set of people, one set of people. I see him about one time again, eh? I end up seeing him in the area where we reach him. And, well, he move away faster eh, because he started knowing people so happen when well, he bounced with me, so I didn't get to kill him. We saw the coffee looking there. Yeah. We're well, looking all right. We we'll get a little coffee to drink. Yeah, nothing good. Yeah. It's darker now, and Sham and Nev can begin to patrol around the houses. Although caimans are protected throughout the entire island of Trinidad, poaching occurs frequently, especially when the reptiles are big. The same is true for anacondas. A great deal of time and patience are needed to capture reptiles. As soon as they sense the torchlight, they run away. Poachers have made them very suspicious. Once the animal is captured, Sham will take it to the center of the reserve and release it. This practice enables reptiles to be saved and at the same time repopulates the center of Nariva, since in recent years, poachers have wreaked havoc throughout the reserve and the Cayman population has been greatly reduced. A little further on, Neb spots another Cayman. Shan gets ready to cast his net again. Thanks to its being caught by Sham, the animal will not suffer the cruel fate of being eaten by the villagers. Unlike Sham, Nev has very little experience with caimans and prefers to keep his distance. There are a great number of small crocodiles here. This means that there is a larger female somewhere that has to be rescued. Sham and his brother are going to spend the night looking for her. The two men finally spot a much bigger caiman, which is probably the female they've been looking for. Oh. 
It is definitely her. She's the perfect size for poachers, too. Fortunately, she's still alive. Apparently, she only just escaped death. Her injured back indicates that poachers already tried to catch her. The game warden of the reserve arrived before it was too late. The following morning, the two brothers returned to the center of Nariva to release the Caymans into the protected zone. Sham's job is not an easy one. Even if the reserve is not very big, he has to watch it and the areas around it all alone, all the time. He is on his own against poachers and with only rudimentary means at his disposal. Nevertheless, he loves his work, which enables him to live in nature and get close to all sorts of animals. Today, happy to set his prisoners free, Sham is proud of having transmitted this passion to his younger brother. Soon, Nev will become the second guardian of Nariva. Working together will increase their speed and their effectiveness. They will be able to double the number of patrols in the reserve and around the houses, and study the flora and fauna with greater precision. One day, perhaps, thanks to their efforts and those who succeed them, Nariva will be saved.